Let's talk about a couple of the big things, and there's two words we lumped together. I think you're gonna dissect them. Talk to me about stress and anxiety. Which is worse, which is greater? How do we understand stress and anxiety? Well, they, they're actually very different. So stress is something really, it's just that everybody experiences, and it all, of course, depends on your interpretation of the event. So, is that what we're going through right now, trying to get through this program, a little stress? <laughs> no, no, it's, this is easy. Okay. But, but also, stress is in the eyes of the beholder. Because you can, like, if, if you were asked to, to, to lead an army, you would be really stressed out. But the person who's trained to do that is not stressed at all. That's what they're equipped to do. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, when I started anesthesia, to me it was very stressful to, you know, control someone's vital signs. But then once you know what to do, it's not. It was stressful for me when you were putting me under. <laughs> <laughs> so, so stress is in the eyes of the beholder. So, of course, so everyone has certain levels of stress. But anxiety is a very different animal. So anxiety is, is a combination of, well, there's different kinds of anxiety. There's, there's medical like anxiety, which is an anxiety disorder. So that's a brain chemical imbalance. Can that be treated? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay. And we can talk about that, because that's what I did in my mental health clinic. And that's, it's actually very common. Uh, but then there's, there's uh, anxiety that just comes because you were raised in a fearful home. And so if, you, if your parents were anxious, they would just teach you that in our, our family, we're always anxious about everything. So can I just pause for a moment? So fear, you talked about, so if fear is a big component in the home that you've grown up with, mm -hmm. that's going to feed that whole disorder of anxiety. Well, that's true. It would, if there is a, a biochemical anxiety running through the family, like if it's a family history, then if it's a fearful home, that will magnify it. But you can have anxious homes and nobody has a chemical imbalance. Like no one has anxiety disorder. It's just, that's their culture. You know, if you come from an anxious culture, you'd be raised to be fearful of everybody. Okay, so let me, let me struggle with you on a, a scriptural perspective because we always want to say, how do I do with my anxiety? Mm -hmm. And Jesus made these statements in Matthew 6. I'm actually going to teach from it later on in the show. He said, be anxious for nothing. Uh, and Paul actually says that in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, uh, be anxious for nothing, but everything in prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. And then it says the peace of God, and we all want peace, it says the peace that passes all understanding will flood your hearts. So, okay, I've prayed that prayer, but I still had anxiety. What's mm -hmm. wrong with me? Yeah, yes, and this came up in my office all the time. And it's because I saw mostly a Christian population in my clinic, and 20% and of the population is struggling with thought control. So what, what, when they would hear that verse, and if they had an anxiety disorder, they would feel much, much worse. You see? A lot of guilt and shame. Oh, terrible. And you see, because one form of anxiety and fear is anxiety disorder. So that's 20% of the population who can't control their thoughts because of a low serotonin level. Well, an anxiety disorder, if your serotonin level is low, you can't shut off the anxious thoughts. Like, you just don't have that control. You know, it's like having blurred vision. You just can't see into the distance, regardless of how hard you're trying. So when they hear that verse, they feel such shame and condemnation that, oh, I'm, I must be a weak Christian, I'm, I'm disobeying God, he must be really unhappy with me, and that just gives them more things to worry about. So those verses are written to people who have full thought control. So okay. in other words, if your brain chemistry is normal and you have control of your thoughts, well then stop worrying. But the people I saw, which is very, very common, if you have anxiety disorder, you can't unless you have medical help. So what hope is there in that situation? Because there's a lot of times I just don't want to talk about it. So how's the anxiety disorder? Maybe before you talk about what hope, talk to me about how it's going to manifest itself in relationships. Oh, well, my goodness. The, um, when, if you have anxiety disorder, then that means you can't shut off thoughts you don't want. So in anxiety, you're just, you're afraid of everything. I mean, you can have phobias about certain things, but you can, what's more common is just your, everything makes you fearful. So that really disrupts relationships, relationship with God, relationships with the people, your, your occupation. It's very, very disruptive in life. But there is hope. Like the, these things are very correctable. Like there are medicines that will correct that chemical imbalance, give you back thought control so you can think clearly the same way an optometrist can give you glasses and you can see clearly. So sometimes there's a stigma with medication. You know, well, I have to take the medication forever. How, how, talk to people who are struggling with the whole thing of, you know, if, if I'm really trusting in God, and we hear people say this even on television, you know, if you mm -hmm. really have faith, mm -hmm. you're not going to need those things. Mm -hmm. Let's oh, unpack that. Oh, I, I get emails all the time. Like this year, there's some very prominent uh, people in Christian media who are saying that you just it's just mind over matter. You can just think your way out of depression, anxiety, and all that and that you don't need medicines, and medicines are bad. It's a crutch, it's a tool of Satan. Uh, to using, it's a secular treatment for a spiritual problem. 
And so what my answer to that is, would you take your glasses off and then just you know, expect to see better because you choose to? Well, I know today that if I want to read anything, I'm going to have to put my glasses well, yeah. back on. It's only pride that's keeping you and me with our glasses off yeah, that's right now. Right. Yeah. That's right. But, it, but if we have medicines that will restore the chemical balance and give you back thought control. So like, what's, if you're allowed to take medicines for thyroid trouble, why is there a stigma about medicines to correct your chemical imbalance? I mean, it's no fault of your own. It runs in families. So what's the solution? Because you, you've talked in brief about the, this, but how do we help more people? And I know you've uh, given so much of your, your life right now and your energy to helping people understand this. Let's say I'm not in that 20% group, mm -hmm. but I'm really struggling with anxiety. Um, I know it's going to impact my marriage. It's going to impact me as a father, what I pass on to my children. How are some ways that I can rearrange my life? Is there some practical things that I need to begin to do? Yes. So if we if we exclude now the people who need medications to control their thoughts, okay. so the 80% of people who are anxious, then anxiety is caused by something if it's not a chemical imbalance. And it's usually something in your past. So you started to believe lies because of events in your past. So whether it's the environment you were raised in or traumatic events that took place throughout your life, you started to interpret it in a very threatening way. Um, way that you're starting to anticipate something bad happening. And so really, that's something that a counselor can help you with because there are roots There are roots to why you're now interpreting your life in a more anxious way than someone else who sees the same situation who wouldn't be anxious. So I'm a self-fulfilled man who has it all together. Uh, of course. Okay, oh, that's, so that's, that's just a normal guy. Just I'm just a normal guy. So what needs to be happening in my mind to say, I need to go to talk to somebody to begin to address some of these issues because I want to pretend I have it all together. Right. Well, so the purpose of our, the reason I wrote the book on my website is for people to actually assess themselves. For, to actually, so what we do is explain to people is, this is what normal thinking is, this is what abnormal thinking is. So when you're talking about anxiety, abnormal thinking is you interpret everything as fearful and threatening. Yeah. Well, that's not normal. Also, that's a tool of Satan. That is an open door to darkness. Satan just loves, his favorite way of attacking humans is making them anxious and fearful and worried. That's, that's his, that's his, that is his absolutely most favorite entry point. So, You've written a book called Emotionally Free. Prescription for Healing Body, Soul, and Spirit. And, uh, and how do people get a hold of the book? Oh, they just go to my website, drgrantmullen.com, and go into our resource section. Okay, well, it's an amazing book, um, a helpful book. I had somebody actually in my church uh, just a week ago talking about, I got his book, I got to read it. And I said, yes, you do. And on more than one occasion, people come to me and say, can you give me Dr. Mullen's home phone number? Yes. And I just, yes. you know, you should give me uh, quite a bit of money for uh, yes. holding back on that. But that just speaks to me of the desperateness. And as they were talking to me, I was pondering actually recording this program with you because people are desperate to get help. Mm -hmm. People want to know, is, is there a way through the anxiety? So how do I reorder my thoughts? Walk me through some of the steps that you uh, often share with people who come into your office or when you do your, your, mm -hmm. your, your, uh, your large conferences that you and your wife uh, lead. Well, the first thing is to realize that we're all struggling with something. So in other words, just you know, join the crowd. Just, just because you're struggling with something, don't assume that everyone else is perfect. So you've actually struggled yourself. Oh, my goodness, yes. I mean, our marriage was falling apart. We had to go to a counselor. He walked us through the whole inner healing pathway. In fact, most of what's in the book is what we learned from the counselor when we went through our marriage crisis. So otherwise, I would have just been a typical guy. Oblivious. Or you would have been a doctor and just said, let's increase the medication. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't until God allowed us to hit a wall that he had to show me all these things through our own crisis. Pain is the greatest motivator. What kind of pain were you experiencing? Well, in our marriage crisis, we, our, in our marriage was falling apart. We just weren't connecting. So then we went to the counselor and he just said, you two have so many issues of your own. We have to deal with them before we start talking about the relationship. So this is what you're talking about, going back and and dealing with the past. Yeah, yeah it's, it's your baggage, that's right. And so what I try to encourage people is, you, you're not the only one, okay? We're all struggling with something. It's a matter of identifying what you're struggling with and then don't stay stuck. Start moving forward. In other words, don't stay that way just because you've always been that way.